Revelations. We pray that you are still enjoying it. You know, it's been a, a several months since we've been studying it. And then, to me, I look at it, it's, it's almost like a story continuing to open up. So we pray that it's been a blessing to you. And today we're going to be in Revelations chapter 17. The last couple of weeks, we have been studying about the opening of the vows in chapter 16. And of course, we had to break it down into three different parts. But today we're going to move into chapter 17, talking about the woman on the beast. So if you have your study guide, Feel free to um, follow along. If not, we are going to be in chapter 17 of the book of Revelations. And as we move forward, I want you to understand that there's no way for us to give due justice to actually digging into these scriptures the way I'd like to, uh, because I'd like to spend uh, at least uh, an hour or so, well, maybe every three or four scriptures, to really milk them for for all the revelation and truth that's uh, that's contained therein. But according to our time frame and uh, the platform we're having to use, we can't do that at this time. But I want you to enjoy the Word of God. Enjoy going into the Word with us because the most important aspect of your life is understanding God's plan for your life. God has a plan for you. God wants to do some extremely great things through you. He wants to demonstrate his authority, his power. He wants to demonstrate who he really is through you. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're trying to understand what the fullness of all this is about, uh, why you need to study the word, why you need to go into the book of Revelation, it helps us to be well rounded with an understanding as to what God is doing uh, in these last days. Mm -hmm. When you go into the book of Revelation, again, it's not consecutive or, or going one after the other in consequential uh, uh, order, but mm -hmm. it is actually set up in such a manner as that God will give you sometimes the end at the beginning, then he'll go back and fill in the details. Sometimes he'll even go back in history and lay the foundation or reveal the foundation of a lot of things. And mm -hmm. so this book of Revelation is really a revelation, not only for the future, not only for the present, but also a revelation for the past. Mm -hmm. And as we go into this particular chapter, this is again a very vital chapter, uh, as though all the others were not as vital. But this reveals to us the hand that religion is going to be playing at the end of time. Uh, it's not a coincidence that you can now name the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You can now profess to be a Christian and not have to change your lifestyle at all. It's not co coincidental that, uh, that, that, uh, Christianity now is just an, a name tag. Mm -hmm. it, it's just a title. It's just something that somebody uh, uh, chooses or picks for their own personal and sometimes very selfish ambitions mm -hmm. or goals or objectives. This is just the spirit of the times. Right. This is a sign of what is going to come during the tribulation period. Mm -hmm. Now we're in the tribulation period in this 17th chapter and as you begin to focus on what's going on, just remember it's going to be focusing on worldly religion or a religion that uh, has the appearance of godliness but denies the power thereof. That's right. And you were talking about religion and how, you know, it used to be um, when you said you were a Christian, everybody knew that you, you lived your life worthy of Christ-likeness. But now, you know, if you say you're a Christian, just sometimes there's so many things that's acceptable by the world standard. And that's one of the things this particular lesson is warning us of, especially in the tribulation period, how you see if you're too close to the world's thinking, then you'll think, well, that is, I'm a Christian. But you got to realize, are you Christ-like by the word of God? Not by the world standard, but are you living a life like Christ by the, the word of God? And that's the way we have to be careful, not just in the last days, but even in these times, that we don't let the subtility of the devil, of the enemy, of our souls come in and think, make us think that, just as long as I'm dotting one I here or crossing one T over here that I'm living right or I'm doing everything I know. But we have to be careful to make sure when we say we are a Christian that our whole lives lines up with Christ likeness, not just one area. So as you begin to look at, at the framework of everything that's been happening uh, for especially the last 2,000 years, everything has been framing itself mm -hmm. for a time and a season when religion uh, and Christianity will be so commingled together that mm -hmm. uh, that you'll be able to look more like a Christian being uh, uh, an enemy of the of the cross uh, than those that are genuine Christians. Mm -hmm. uh, this means that they've gone through a segment where it was like clothesline kind of preaching and and uh, dealing with uh, 
uh, how many, whether you go to church or not, determining whether you're a Christian and, and other little standards that have been set up. Uh, and then with these standards being set up, it's very easy for those who have very little intent of serving God mm -hmm. to, to perform these religious activities and yet be far away from the power and the authority of Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ can get you to a place and a point where you don't lie, where you don't steal, where mm -hmm. you don't uh, cheat, where you don't uh, uh, hurt others, when you don't, you, you, you eliminate hate in your life and all these these other um, uh, acts of the flesh, mm -hmm. they can be eliminated. They can be taken uh, out of your life, but it's not something that will happen with the snap of a finger. That's right. You have got to be reprogrammed. Mm -hmm. You have got to be uh, taught. You have got to uh, uh, receive with meekness the engrafted right. word, which is able to save your soul. Mm -hmm. And the, the sad thing about it is today we have more Bibles in the home than ever in the history of mankind. Mm -hmm. We have more religious programming today than there's ever been since the beginning of mm -hmm. Christianity. Mm -hmm. Yet today we have few Fewer, uh, fewer uh, per ratio men and women living for the Lord than we ever have. We have uh, fewer households today that have Jesus as the center of their functioning than ever in the time that Christianity has been uh, recognized as being God's true uh, way of living. Mm -hmm. you, you know, and it's, it's kind of sad because uh, when you look at going through the Bible, studying the Bible, reading the Bible, did you know that only about 60% in the United States, only somewhere around 60% of the believers have actually ever read the Bible? That's right. And when you start talking about reading it from cover to cover, it drops down below 50%. Uh, did you know that uh, when it comes to reading the Bible, did you know that it only takes 70 hours to go completely through the entire Bible? Bible? Did you know it's only about 800 or 900 pages, which is equivalent to a very good novel? Mm -hmm. Yet I can tell you that if you lined up 10 believers right now, line them up before you, that out of that 10, only about five of them or maybe six uh, will have actually gone uh, into the Bible and, and, uh, and read the Bible. And if you took it on a world scale, meaning uh, leave out Christianity, just everybody that's, and I'm not talking about all over the world, I'm talking about just here in the United States, mm -hmm. uh, the saved and the unsaved, only one in five wow. have actually read the Bible, only 20%. How can we profess to be true believers mm -hmm. when we are not studying yeah, the mm -hmm. only manual that we have to know and understand to be able to reap the benefits that God has for us. That's right. And you, you said one key word that triggered a thought about the manual, the Bible being the manual for our lives on earth. And a lot of us do the Bible like we do manuals when we get electronics, when we get a new phone, when we get a new bike. I know for me personally, I, I remember the Lord telling me I was trying to assemble something without looking at the manual because I'm like, well, you know, it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. I'm just going to put it together. But something would always be off. Something would be missing because I felt like I knew better than to look at the manual. First of all, it took too much time to read all that stuff. I'm like, I ain't got time to read that. But we can be the same way in terms of the word. We can have the manual in our house. We can have the manual in several different languages, several different interpretations to break it down to make it easier. But we still don't take the time to look at that manual to make sure we have the right instructions. But we have to realize unless we read the manual, we're not going to be put together right. We're not going to be transformed right. So we got to remember that's our key. We have the manual. We got to use the manual. And you also said something too about you know, um, more doing good things. And a lot of times we get mixed up, well, being morally good with being Christian. You know, just because we're morally good does not mean our heart has been changed. And, you know, we can do all the morally good things according to the world and still miss God. I was looking at Matthew 7. It's a very familiar, mm -hmm. familiar scripture. But it says, Not everyone said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. He said, Many on that day shall say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name have we not cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So that leads us to say, to know and acknowledge, look, I can be doing all this morally good stuff and still miss God. So we got to make sure 
that we're not just professing um, Christ-like, but our hearts are not changed. We're profession, professing that I'm a Christian and I'm living the way I need to be when I haven't even read the Word of God. You've got to read the manual and you've got to do it from the heart, not just with good deeds. So, so when, you, when you get right down to it, and, and we're looking at here a woman on the beach, which is uh, in this particular chapter, mm-hmm. uh, figuratively speaking about religion, right. uh, being based on the, uh, the doctrines and the teachings of, of Satan mm-hmm. and all of those that work for him. But when you, when you look at the gist of it, you may be saying within yourself, well, I'm trying to, trying to do everything I know to do right, and, and I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I, 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 I take care of the, the uh, things that are necessary to prove to others mm-hmm. that I have been changed, but, but you don't quite uh, get it, do you? you. Uh, when it comes to serving God, it has to be from the heart. Amen. You know, which simply means you don't do what you do to be saved. That's right. You do what you do because That's you right. are saved. You do what you do because you have a redeemer. Mm-hmm. You don't do it for the love of man. You do it for the love of God. You don't do it to meet the approval of man. You do it to meet the approval of God. Mm-hmm. It is easy to perpetrate enough to meet the approval of man. That's true. It is very easy for you to qualify by man's standard as being morally right Mm -hmm. and morally true, Mm -hmm. but not according to God's word. Firstly, you must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You must believe that he is, listen very carefully, you must believe that he is the only way Mm -hmm. to the Father. Not Buddha, not uh, not all these other religions, but Jesus, Mm -hmm. the Son of the living God, Mm -hmm. is the only way to heaven. I know Mm -hmm. that to many of you that sounds archaic. Uh, You you say, well, who are we to say uh, Mm -hmm. what is what? And man wrote the Bible anyway, and man was uh, instrumental, and man could make the Bible say whatever he want to say. That is the natural content of trying to understand God. Mm -hmm. But when you come into the kingdom, don't try to serve the Lord like Nicodemus. Mm -hmm. Nicodemus tried to serve the Lord by keeping rituals and trying to pick the mind of those who uh, he believed to be true and righteous before God. Mm -hmm. That is not the way you live the life. Mm -hmm. Jesus nailed it when he told Nicodemus, uh, marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. Mm -hmm. He said, you cannot even see the the kingdom them without being born again. What makes you think that the way you're living right now without knowing any or very little of the Bible mm-hmm. qualifies you to be able to see what God uh, wants you to see and to do what God wants you to do? Mm-hmm. Darlings, it's not hard. It is not hard to serve God. The Bible said the way of the transgressor hard. is hard. hard. Well, what is so hard then when it comes to my getting it right? You are trying to do it yourself. You cannot uh, qualify righteousness wise to make it into heaven. You've got to have the blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary laying claim to your salvation. It is not your righteousness. It is not how many I's you can dot or how many T's you can cross. It is who do you believe in? Do you believe that Jesus is the son of the living God? Do you believe that he died not for just the sins of the world, but did you do you believe that you are a sinner and he died for mm-hmm. your sins? Do you believe that it is possible that by believing that the works that he did redeemed you, mm-hmm. that you can literally believe that Jesus died for your sins, right. ask him to forgive you of your sins, and believe that he has forgiven you? Mm-hmm. And with that that uh, in, inner uh, conversion, speak out with your mouth to confirm it by saying, I am saved. Yes. Now, when you say I am saved, you are not done 
being saved yet. That's you right. have just stepped in the you've just stepped in the kingdom, mm-hmm. but you got to learn how to live in the kingdom. That's right. Just like you had to learn how to live in the kingdom of the world, you have to learn to live mm-hmm. in the kingdom of God. And the things are twisted mm-hmm. in the kingdom of the world, uh, 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 contrary to what God wants. In other words, you 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 exalt yourself in the world, mm-hmm. but you humble yourself, yourself in the in God's kingdom. Mm-hmm. All these principles will not work Mm -hmm. until you get the Bible understanding of how you are to function in the body of Christ. Amen. And we have to be careful what we accept, you know, even in the little things. And I wanted to read this excerpt in the book because I think it's very important in going over this chapter. It says, you must always remember the spiritual fact that a little leaven leavens the whole lump. And this chapter we're going to be talking about it signifies the importance of not being conformed to this world, but being transformed by the renewing of our mind. And this is the key. The knowledge of truth does not set you free, but it will make you free. And I want to read that one more time. The knowledge of truth does not set you free, but it will make you free. And I think about the precept of us, you know, being in church and being in spiritual um, classes, empowerment classes, and not everybody is transformed. The reason being that although they may hear the truth and it may accept the truth, they're not applying the truth. So it's not making them free. So they have the truth, but you have to apply the truth. And I think about the precept of, you know, I love fixing um going into houses and fixing them up, looking at how they are, you know, and then having a vision of how I can fix this, replace that, and make it look better. And that's what we are. You were talking about coming to Christ, how, you know, when we first come to him, we are, most of us are a hot mess, so to speak. So we have to be cleaned and cleansed by the the working in the water of the word. It's the same principle. When I come to the Lord, my house is, is just all messed up. It's dilapidated, if you will. So, but the word of God is what fixes me up. The word of God is what changes everything, makes everything new. And if you remember sometimes, you know, going into the word, how you used to think, but when you came into the word of God, it transformed your mind. You didn't think that way anymore. It it almost like your, your vision, just like with Nicodemus, when the Lord told him, you were opened up to so many new things and you saw things in a new way. So remember a little leaven, leaven the whole lump. So that means that if I start accepting a little bit of the things that may, it's okay to accept this, or, you know, it sounds okay. I'm helping someone, but does it go against the word of God? Does it go against the one true God? Because if it goes against the one true God, then it's still not right. It's still idolatry. It's still a little leaven. And at the end of the day, at the end of your life, how are you going to be an account to God that I really, truly worship you and only you? Yeah, you know what's really interesting mm-hmm. uh, as we as we look at this and look at being made free. Mm-hmm. Uh, the interesting thing is uh, anybody can perpetrate a lie. Mm-hmm. You know, That's I mean, true. anyone uh, can uh, using the world system. You can make a lie. Uh, look good. more like the truth than the truth does. Yeah. There are instruments, there are ways, there are certain things you can do uh, in this world that you can always have a good reputation mm-hmm. uh, on the on the outside or or in amongst the public. But the key is how are you when nobody is watching you or only a handful of people are, are really paying attention to you? Mm-hmm. How do you act? Uh, when you get by yourself or when you get into opportunities or, or areas where you can actually uh, speak, only have yourself to speak for whether you're accountable or not or whether you're doing right or not. The thing I appreciate about God is you can be the same way uh, outside in public as you are in private mm-hmm. when your heart has been changed, Amen. when you really don't want to do wrong, when you want to do right, and when you learn how to do right. See, a lot of God's people don't understand. You must learn how to do right. You mm-hmm. don't automatically know it. And just because your heart is changed does not mean that your mind has changed enough so that you now know what to do and you now can say what's right and what's wrong. Mm-hmm. No, darling, you, you, you are transformed according to Romans 12 and 2 by the renewing of your mind. Mm-hmm. Now, when you look in the 17th chapter, the very first verse, 
It starts out, and here's what it says. It says, there came uh, uh, one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me. So one of those seven angels mm-hmm. who had those bold judgments mm-hmm. came and began to talk to John. Right. Uh, he said, the John said, come on, I, I want to show you something. Mm-hmm. Uh, come hither. He said, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Look at the way he said this. The great whore mm-hmm. that sitteth upon many waters. Whore meaning someone who is not faithful, someone who is uh, uh, who actually has relationships out of covenant or out of wedlock, uh, that sitteth upon many waters. And when you see that, that phrase, many waters in the Bible, it's talking about many nations, mm-hmm. many kindred, many tongues, mm-hmm. many people of different ethnicities. Mm-hmm. So you see, uh, he said, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication mm-hmm. and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her mm-hmm. fornication. Mm-hmm. So you see, we're not talking about a literal woman here. Mm-hmm. We're talking about about a a way of operating. That's We're right. talking about a mindset. We're talking about a worldly way of doing things right and being right of its own merit. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you see, Satan does not have to come in and make you do anything. Mm-hmm. He is the, the father of lies, which means he is the master of deception. That's right. Again, he is the father of lies, which mm-hmm. makes him the master of deception. Mm-hmm. All he has to do is to take the truth and tweak it in his way a little bit, and he can change the full meaning of everything you see in your Bible. Mm -hmm. God knew this from the very beginning. That's why whenever the Spirit of God spoke through holy men who were moved upon, that's why Mm -hmm. uh, the Spirit of God actually caused them to speak some things in a mystery, Mm -hmm. some things hidden. You've got to be able to rightly divide the Word of God. You cannot take it just the way it's written, page by page and chapter by chapter and Mm -hmm. verse by verse as though it's had, you, you're getting the fullness of God. Mm-hmm. No, you've got to be able to dig into it. Mm-hmm. You've got to be able to have the right sight. Mm-hmm. And when I say the right sight, seasoned sight, you need to have spent time being mm-hmm. engulfed with the word of God. You mm-hmm. need to spend time uh, having that word work in your life. Mm-hmm. I did not learn what I know about God, what I know about the Bible. Mm-hmm. I didn't learn it for you. I learned it for me. I wanted to make sure that I understood what God would have me to understand as a leader, mm-hmm. uh, as as a uh, as a a worker, as a parent, as in all these different areas. I needed to understand mm-hmm. what God had to say about it, and I didn't do a great job of understanding in the beginning. That's but right. the more I went through, mm-hmm. the 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 more I actually uh, went through the different experiences and suffered through the different things I did, mm-hmm. the more I began to realize that I could obey God mm-hmm. through the things I suffered. That's right. You know what? The, when I was little, we used to have a, a heater in the house, and then, and you put wood in that heater, and man, you could get that thing so hot mm-hmm. that it'd be a, be an apple red <laughs> on the yeah. outside. And guess yeah. what? I like red, man. So you know, I looked at that red; it didn't look so pretty, and I I want man, I will I wanted to kiss it; it looked so good, you know. And uh, I mom would tell us, uh, my brother and myself, he said, "Do not mm-hmm. touch that." Uh, when it's red like that, it mm-hmm. will burn you. Well, do you think I believe that? No, no I didn't. didn't. I, it was too pretty to hurt. Mm-hmm. It looked too good. I touched it, and mm-hmm. Lord, it burned me. Did I touch it again? Yes, I did, because I felt like that. Maybe it was the wrong hand, so mm-hmm. I tried the other hand. I did yeah, several right. things trying to figure out mm-hmm. what it was, but guess what? Mm-hmm. It didn't take many times for me to get an understanding so mm-hmm. I could obey what my mama told me to obey her about mm-hmm. through what I experienced That's in right. trying to disobey or not obeying her. That's mm-hmm. the way it is with God, darling. Amen. I think about you talking about rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, I always go back to Jesus' wilderness experience when the enemy came at him with, you know, the word. And he came with part of the word. He didn't come with all the word. So if we're not careful in our everyday lives, the enemy may present something and, and it seems like, oh, well, the Bible does say that. But you have to be able to say, and I say this so many times, please get this. You have to be able to say, yes, but it's all 
also written thus and thus. You cannot go uh, take one scripture and use it out of context or everything in your life because it will not apply to everything in your life. There have been several seasons in my life where I needed several different words. I needed several different promises. And if I only knew one scripture, if I only knew one context or one way of looking at the matter, I would have been bound. As a matter of fact, I was bound for years because I didn't, I didn't allow the word of God to speak to me. I allowed the people to speak to me and tell me their interpretation of what God said. And I was bound. And part of me was confused because I was always told that the life in Christ was supposed to be free. You know, it was supposed to be happy and joyful. And I'm thinking, Lord, why am I so bound? Why am I so heavy? Why does it seem like it's so dark? I, you know, it didn't feel free at all. But when I got into the word of God and I went to other places in the Bible where it told me about, you know, I don't have to be condemned. If I'm living a life in the spirit that God has freed me, I'm a new creature. I'm like, okay, I got this. So I began to pull off those things that had those lists. Don't do this. Don't wear pants. Don't do this. Because I was focusing on the list and not the grace of God on what he had done in my life. So I was not rightly dividing the word of truth. So you got to remember, if you're going to be transformed, if you're going to live a life of peace, a life of joy, you have to know the word of God because there's so many scriptures that remind us when we get out of the will of God, they remind us, oh, you need, you're not in the will of God. You need to get back where you need to be. I think about the Psalms that remind me if I'm in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. So when I'm feeling down, I'm like, wait a minute. The word of God says when I'm in his presence, there is fullness of joy. So it reminds you of so many things to help keep you on track, to help you see Okay, is, does this line up with the word of God? If not, then the word tells you where you need to be. So we are without excuse, but you have to remember, don't allow the, the, the way of the world, even the way of some religious people to bind you. You have to know the word of God for yourself, nor for every season, because it will change. There have been so many, you'll go through season after season after season, but the more you know, the more you'll be able to grow, the more you will be able to say, no, it is also written because that's going to be your outlet. That's going to be your way out. That's going to be your weapon in your time of doubt and unbelief. So when you look at this, now that, that uh, second verse says that, uh, uh, this uh, this woman, this mm -hmm. whore, right. uh, had actually uh, infiltrated and actually uh, 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 used deception mm -hmm. and and corruption among not just the kings of right. the earth, but also against all the inhabitants of the earth uh, who received from her and drank of her wine. Mm -hmm. See, the thing of it is, wine here is very significant mm -hmm. because in the Bible, wine is a reference to the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Well, here, her wine is a reference to her religious uh, way of doing things contrary to the will and purpose of God. Mm -hmm. In other words, the doctrine and teachings of the Antichrist. And, and you know, when I when I look at this and I look at the, the teaching and the subtlety mm -hmm. of misunderstanding things, I think about how one of the things, one of the greatest injustices I saw mm -hmm. uh, when I started really getting into the Bible mm -hmm. was how churches or how religious folk mm -hmm. looked at women. Yeah, this was true. now. This was uh, to me. It just didn't. It didn't add up. Mm -hmm. uh, when I began to to realize that that women would not even be here mm -hmm. if it had not been for uh, man's need. That's right. Uh, so you see, uh, uh, God and that need was not determined or decided by. Uh, uh, by man, mm -hmm. um, it, it was decided by God. God said it is not good for man to dwell alone. And then the thing that really shocked me as I began to get into the Bible, I began to think about how we hear about Samson and, and Japheth and all these other judges, mm -hmm. but there was also a woman judge. Mm -hmm. Her name was Deborah. Right. So how could a woman be a judge and please God mm -hmm. uh, in under the law and 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 not be able to do uh, uh, hold a hold a position of authority in the uh, under un grace. Mm -hmm. It just didn't make sense to me, darling. Right. Then I look at Ruth. How uh, you know she had a she had a book, mm -hmm. you know, a book named oh, book. Uh, after her. That's right. Uh, Esther had a book named after her. There was no book named after after uh, 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 a whole lot of the patriarchs of old, but they had books. In other words, they had their story recorded. Uh, in a foul so that the whole world could see uh, their works before God. I, I think about how in the Bible, the, the, there's one scripture that, that, that they pull out in the New Testament mm -hmm. uh, that they use to keep women from being able to do what they need to do in the kingdom. And that is, it says that women are not to teach 
mm-hmm. uh, uh, over men or usurp authority of teaching right. uh, greater than man. And and the thing of it is that was one particular episode uh, in the Corinthian church where there were some unruly women that needed to be dealt with. But you see, you go to the book of Romans, mm-hmm. go to the last chapter of the book of Romans, and there you have uh, the apostle Paul uh, actually naming the pastor of a church. And instead of naming the, the man's name first, mm-hmm. he named the woman's mm-hmm. name first, which means the woman was the senior pastor mm-hmm. and the man was the co-pastor. Mm-hmm. Also in the book of Romans, he, he goes into detail toward the end, there was Phoebe. Mm-hmm. Phoebe, he said, she is going to be handling the business of the Lord. Right. In other words, she's going to be a deacon. Mm-hmm. He said to them, men and women, mind you, he said to them, whatever she tells you to do, do it. That's right. You know, uh, uh, humble yourself and recognize that the authority of God works in her life. Mm-hmm. Read through the Bible. It speaks about Mary, the mother of Jesus, being a preacher. She mm-hmm. went about preaching and proclaiming. Mary Magdalene, when it came to looking after Jesus, mm-hmm. the Bible says that the women folk, uh, they were the ones who made sure that the bills were paid and mm-hmm. made sure that the, the men had a place to be and all. They they looked after the cares of, of, the, of the, the ministry. Mm-hmm. And then when you when you go into the Bible and you write the divide the word, you begin to realize that that God is the same God. He said, yes, in he His is. sight, there is no male, no mm-hmm. female. He said, but all are one in me. Mm-hmm. He said, you know, I don't look at you as a man mm-hmm. or as a woman. I look at you as an anointing. Amen. And and Amen. in the body of Christ, I know some of you probably already said, well, I won't ever listen to this again. <laughs> yeah, but it's the truth. <laughs> you good. I tell you what, you do. Amen. You go in the Bible and you use the whole Bible, not just two or three scriptures here and there. Go into the whole Bible. God said it this way. He said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said in his word, I change not. Why would he have one acceptance level under the law, which was according to the word of God, beneath grace, and then turn around under grace and not allow certain things? That's right. You know, I think about you were talking about uh, as far as male and female, but it's an anointing. Even in Galatians, it says there is neither Jew nor Greek. This is chapter three. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor free female for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And we either have to be careful in terms of the world standard of what men do and what women do, because if we are to live by the anointing, what is your anointing? Yes, I'm a woman, but I'm also a prophet. Yes, you're a woman, but you're also an apostle. So we have to be careful that we don't line up with the world standards of what women are. A lot of times you hear like you, somebody say, well, women, they like to talk. They like to gossip, but in your anointing, what do you do? There's a time and a place for everything. Yes. You can catch up on the the, the news at the hair salon, you can catch up on the news at the barbershop. But there comes a time in your life where you have to put aside whether you male, whether you female, and be your anointing. Because if when you mature in Christ, you realize I have to be this, I have to be this anointing or exercise anointing in Christ. This is my authority. But if I'm so caught up in what the world says I am, the world says I have an attitude, the world says I got to be about this and that, then I miss it. And I miss being able to minister to people, both male and female. So remember, don't get caught up even in the world standard of what a female should be like, a female anointing or a male anointing. Just be the anointing. The anointing is what destroys the York, not your sex. So remember, it's who you are inside that exudes the power of God, not what you do. Because what you, who you are inside is going to exude that to other people. So remember, it has nothing to do with what the world says that women are supposed to be, what men are supposed to be. What is your anointing? Are you doing that? When you start doing that, then all the other stuff will line up. But remember, don't focus so much on what you're supposed to be doing or, you know, what women need to do, what men need to do. What is your anointing supposed to be doing? Yeah, you know what really amazes me? If you go into any church anywhere in the United States, mm-hmm. it's not that way in Africa. Most of the time in Africa, the, the men, uh, there are more men in the church than there are women. But, yeah. but in the United States, you go into any church you want to in America, and uh, two-thirds of it, almost four-fifths of it are mm-hmm. women. That's true. Now, you got the men, you got a, a handful of men who actually, if they depended on the men to get the work done, nothing would get done. The women come in and they get the work done. Now, I, I need to share this with you because a lot of you are not really paying attention with the, with the watchful eye of the Spirit. Okay. But listen, the world has now recognized or is beginning to recognize the importance mm-hmm. of women. 
That's true. Now, this is not a coincidence. Mm -hmm. I firmly believe toward the end of time, Mm -hmm. toward the perfection of the church, Mm -hmm. that women are going to play a vital role in teaching, training, and imparting into uh, the men and women as to who they are to be. Mm -hmm. Well, Satan already knows this. So what's happening in the world right now? Women Mm -hmm. are being exalted Mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. And there are a whole lot of religious folk who say, you know, uh, uh, just because they, uh, they're women that they don't deserve to be uh, ranked or be doing the things that they're doing, mm-hmm. not understanding that. See, there's one thing that Satan is able to see. He's able to determine when he see a move of God coming. He's already seen that that, that episode about those that were, were last will be first was mm-hmm. not talking about uh, races mm-hmm. as much as it was probably talking about gender. Mm-hmm. And when you begin to look at it from that perspective, he already knows that. And then see religion. He already knows that the greatest influence on religious uh, side is the mothers, Mm -hmm. the ones who have the children. They spend more time with the children than the men do, Mm -hmm. which means they can pour into them their moral fiber or their moral being. And so he's using that today to corrupt uh, uh, all of humanity, Mm -hmm. to cause them to get more into religion than Christianity. Mm -hmm. Uh, It goes on to say that this angel took a hold of uh, John Mm -hmm. and it says he carried... Uh, John away in the spirit, spirit mm-hmm. into the wilderness. Now, 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 this is really some strange stuff here because uh, uh, now remember he is John is on the Isle of Patmos when he's receiving this revelation. Mm-hmm. Remember his eyes have been burned out, That's so right. he has no natural sight. Mm-hmm. Yet this angel took him in the spirit. And carried him into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And while he was in the wilderness, uh, he said, I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, blasphemy, Mm -hmm. having seven heads and ten horns. So he, 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 he. He picked John up Mm -hmm. in the spirit and took him to the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Wilderness is symbolically speaking of uh, uncivilized or uncultured or or property or land Mm -hmm. that has not been uh, tamed Mm -hmm. by the cultivation of man. So you see, he took him into the the Mm -hmm. rawness of humanity, Mm -hmm. into the rawness of the atmosphere of the world. Mm -hmm. And when when he took him there, he saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. So mm-hmm. this woman was sitting upon a red uh, a red tinged uh, beast. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it went on to say, and she was decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. I mean, she had, she was, she had all kinds of jewelry on. And he said, and, and she was full of names of blasphemy. Mm-hmm. In other words, written all over her was uh, blasphemy against God. Mm-hmm. Talking about there is no God. Talking about God is not this and God is not that. Whatever way you could blaspheme, uh, this woman uh, was labeled and all her works were all about blaspheming God. Mm-hmm. But it, the, 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 all the names of blasphemy, the origin mm-hmm. of blasphemy itself was centered in this woman. Mm-hmm. And she had seven heads and, and ten horns. Mm-hmm. Seven heads talking about her her uh, her her thinking mm-hmm. her her intellect uh, her being able to 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 actually communicate mm-hmm. uh, the the foundation of that was all uh, uh, centered around uh, 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 those uh, those ten heads or seven seven heads mm-hmm. and then it had ten horns those ten horns on those seven heads. Now, just think about it. Some of that means that some of those heads had more than one horn on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you begin to look at those horns. Again, we talked about the horns meaning the power mm-hmm. of the authority. So you, you begin to recognize that here we're talking about something other than a natural or literal woman. That's it's right. religion, darlings. Mm-hmm. It's religion with all of its its foundation. He took... He took John into the wilderness. Mm-hmm. He took him into into where it all started, into where it's all been operating from, mm-hmm. and showed him this. You know, and it, what sticks out to me too, as far as the description of how the woman was clothed that was on on this beast, it talks about purple and gold. Now, where else in the Bible it is talking about how another being that went against God was clothed in these things? Is Ezekiel fourteen, uh, Ezekiel twenty eight? I'm sorry, talking about Satan. It says, "Thou has been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy." covering the sardis the topaz and the diamond the barrel uh 
the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the capernal, and gold. The workmanship of the tablets and thy pipes was prepared in thee the day thou was created. And then it says, Thou art the anointed cherub that covered, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down the midst of the stones of fire. So here we see this woman that's described as having clothed in purple. You know, it's, um, that it zoos royalty. We think about purple today, we think about royalty and gold. And here it's talking about in Ezekiel, this is how Satan was clothed. He was adorned in jewels, all these precious stones. So you see the similarities of the spirit of the matter, that it's the same. Although it's covered in these precious stones, at the core of them is deceitfulness. At, deceitfulness. at the core of it is enmity against God. So so we have to remember, and it goes back to the other thing we've been talking about, regardless of what it looks like, you always have to get to the heart of the matter. You always have to make sure your inward man has been renewed, not so much the outward man, but the inward man. So we won't get into these same situations where we look the part, we look good, we got our jewels, we got all these things that say glory, but inward we're evil and we deceitful and be led away by things that are not of God. And, and, you know, when you look at this verse, it goes on to talk about how uh, she had a golden cup in her hand mm -hmm. uh, full of abominations and filthiness of, for, of, of her fornication. So uh, when you think about a cup, you think about something that you drink out of. Mm -hmm. uh, when you think about a cup, in, as far as God is concerned, mm -hmm. that's God pooling together mm -hmm. uh, your blessings. And the, the old song goes, fill my cup until yes. it overflows. And, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we think about that. Well, this... Uh, this uh, woman, this false doctrine, mm -hmm. false teaching in, in religion mm -hmm. actually is full of, of abominations or things that God would, that God has said, it's an abomination to me. Mm -hmm. Ways of living, lifestyles, mm -hmm. certain things that were abomination to God. Mm -hmm. This woman's cup is full of it. Mm -hmm. uh, also is a, a filthiness of fornication. Fornication meaning uh, uh, actually uh, having sexual relations mm -hmm. uh, outside of mm -hmm. marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, fornication uh, when it relates to uh, a figurative uh, meaning having other uh, gods other than the the uh, than the true and living God. So mm -hmm. this is this was her 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 mode of giving, mm -hmm. her mode of pouring out, mm -hmm. her mode of of giving to others or sharing with others. So you see this false religion, this false doctrine, it did not start in the tribulation period. Mm -hmm. It's been around for thousands and thousands of years. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us, the Apostle Paul said, even uh, uh, Satan himself has transformed himself into mm -hmm. an angel of light. Mm -hmm. When you look at the different... Uh, uh, creatures that Satan is releasing during the tribulation period. And when you look at the leadership, he actually literally sets up his own trinity. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in other words, he's got the, the, uh, the two beasts. He's got the, uh, the Antichrist. Uh, and these all mimic Jesus. They mimic the Father, which is Satan, uh, in this uh, in this episode here, and then they mimic the Holy Spirit, which is the 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 beast or the prophet. So all of this is being done, and what we're seeing happening right here, mm -hmm. what God would have us to understand is it's going on already. Mm -hmm. This stuff does not have to be birthed in the tribulation period. Mm -hmm. It was birthed many many years ago, even in the Garden of Eden, mm -hmm. uh, even in the birthing. Uh, uh, of, of satanic forces throughout the world. It's always been around. Listen very carefully. Hypocrisy mm -hmm. uh, did not just start uh, mm -hmm. when Christ got on the scene. Mm -hmm. False religion has been around since the dawn of mankind. That's right. And uh, you need to understand this. You need to know that it's not a coincidence mm -hmm. that you have some that, uh, that, that look to be lily white and turn out to be black as <laughs> smut uh, when you right. get into to their character. Mm -hmm. It's not an accident. It's mm -hmm. not something that's just happening in the last days. God wants you to understand mm -hmm. that nothing is new going on in the world today and there's nothing going to be new going on during the tribulation period. That's it's right. already happening. And with it already happening, what do we do as believers? How do we deal with this kind of spirit uh, of religion operating around us? Well, mm -hmm. God has a, has a 
has a surefire way of dealing with it. He said we are to grow in him. Mm -hmm. We are to recognize that it's in him we live and move Mm -hmm. and have our being. Mm -hmm. We are to recognize that our number one priority is to know God through the person of Jesus Christ, Mm -hmm. which means we should be receiving uh, the engrafted word. He said five-fold ministry to Mm -hmm. teach us, to train us, to edify us, to cause us to be everything we should be. You do not need to fear what is coming on in the world, nor what is going on now in the world, because whatever's going on in the world is not greater than the one that's operating on the inside of you. You do not have to fret. You do not have to worry. You do not have the need to to find a way to get away from the things of the world because, listen, it's embedded in every fabric of humanity. Mm -hmm. You can't get away from it in the natural sense, Mm -hmm. but you can get away from it in the spiritual sense. How? By renewing your mind. Mm -hmm. Stop thinking the way you used to think. If you are not studying your Bible, you Mm -hmm. need to shut up talking about what God requires for somebody to live. You need to know the word of God. Did I say shut up? Yes, Uh, Yeah. Well, you know, I was trying to be very nice. There's another word Mm -hmm. I could have used, but we need to understand if you're going to talk about God, if you're going to talk about the word of God, you need to know the word. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to try to tell others how to live and you're not spending hardly any time in the word of God yourself and studying to rightly divide, if you don't have somebody pouring into your life on another spiritual plane or another spiritual level, you are disqualifying Mm -hmm. yourself to tell others how to live. Mm -hmm. The key is if I'm going to tell you how to live, I need to have learned how to live myself. Does it mean we're going to be perfect? No. No. Mm -hmm. Does it mean that we're going to have it all together Mm -hmm. so we got this thing so we don't have to be concerned about? Mm -hmm. No. But it does mean that we know enough about the truth that we're striving to walk in the truth ourselves as we share the truth with others. Amen. And there's one point you mentioned about striving to be genuine, striving to be the, the real deal. And I think about, you know, ladies can identify with this, but purses or even clothes. You know, we want the genuine article. You want a genuine Chanel. You want a genuine, you know, Michael Core purse. And if you get the knockoff, and I have had a lot of knockoffs, then it tends to wear a little bit quicker. It's not as uh, sturdy. It's not as durable as the real deal. Well, all I'm saying, you look in terms of Christ, strive to be genuine, strive to be the purest form of God that you can. And, you know, don't get concerned about, well, I don't want to be a hypocrite. That's easy. Just make sure you line up with the word of God. Make sure you're doing everything you need to do in your power to be as genuine as possible in the things that you know. And, you know, knowledge, being without knowledge is not an excuse for us today because there's too much word out there. There's too many things out available to us to be able to get into the word and break it down. But remember, don't worry about, you know, being a hypocrite as long as you're striving to be the genuine article because that's all Christ wants. He wants your heart. He wants to know that in your inward man, you're pure and you're striving to be pure, that you may be a testimony to men that he still saves. He still is real in your life, starting number one. So the God still loves you. Mm-hmm. The bottom line is God loves you. Right. And in the sight of God, although we all serve the same God, mm-hmm. in the sight of God, every single one of us is his favorite. You have a number one enemy who wants to destroy you, and that enemy is Satan. Yes. What he wants to do is to destroy you to get back at God. And I don't believe that for one minute that he really thinks he's winning this thing. Mm-hmm. He has already lost it, but what he's trying to do is when, you, when, when you're a sore loser, mm-hmm. when you're somebody who won't accept losing, yes. what you try to do is take as many mm-hmm. down with you as you can. And that's what Satan's trying to do. Mm-hmm. He is literally trying to spit Wow. In the face of God by trying to get as many that are trying to live for God as he can to turn against God. Mm-hmm. And then we can be so judgmental. Mm-hmm. We can be so self-righteous. We can feel like that we got all the answers and nobody else does that we can help Satan out mm-hmm. by actually cutting off those who are striving to get where maybe some of us are. Mm-hmm. You've got to be able to recognize uh, what's at, at work here. That fifth verse made this statement said upon her forehead Mm -hmm. was a name written and it said mystery babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations 
uh, of the earth. So you see in her forehead, mm -hmm. uh, that means the first thing you can see, she can be seen for who she is. Listen, darlings, you can, you, with the word of God, you can recognize false religion. Mm -hmm. You can recognize false doctrine, mm -hmm. but you cannot do it if you don't have a practical working understanding mm -hmm. of what is right and that's spirit. been rightly divided into your spirit from the word of God. Mm -hmm. But but you can't fool those ones mm -hmm. uh, who are lining up with the word of God. Mm -hmm. You know, even the Holy Spirit will actually uh, actually shift in such a manner mm -hmm. as to help you to see something that's it's not, not right. right. The problem is some of us don't know when the Holy Spirit is shifting for us to commit to somebody who's right mm -hmm. and shifting for us to run from them. <laughs> we we <laughs> haven't true. spent enough time in the word to recognize that there's a lot of shifting that goes on with the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Some of the shifting is a warning mm -hmm. for us to run. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the shifting is a, is a, a boost for us to commit. Oh, right. And you've got to know the difference. You cannot convince me that if you don't know the word of God, mm -hmm. you're able to commit the way you should to the work of God. Mm -hmm. You have got to know the will of God, the work of God, in order to commit properly to the, 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 the things that God would have you to do. Mm -hmm. And it's not hard to do. Mm -hmm. God's got it going in such a manner today as that you can get it 24-7. Yes. Right now, today, mm -hmm. what we're sharing with you, what we're teaching to you. Some of you've never heard any of this before. Mm -hmm. so a lot of you are saying it can't be true. Some of y'all are trying to pick it apart and tear it apart and trying to figure out how to how to how to counter it right. instead of trying to go back into your word of God like mm -hmm. the Bereans did. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe it's true, don't start a fight. Go back to your Bible right. and go into the Word and follow the scriptures we've shared with you mm -hmm. and find some other helps and study the Word and find the truth of God. Mm -hmm. Again, we did not uh, study God's word to be able to dispute and fight and fuss and argue mm -hmm. about the word of God. We studied God's word because we wanted to know the unadulterated truth of God. Mm -hmm. If you want to know the truth, God will get it to you, but it will not automatically, just because you got a Bible in your house, mm -hmm. just because you attend a few services, mm -hmm. just because you have a religious uh, ritual structure that is supposed to, to be uh, able to, to show that you are a godly person, mm -hmm. does not mean that you're going to make it in. Mm -hmm. You have got to study to show yourself approved unto God. And you've got to find a way to do it consistently. Mm -hmm. And you got to find a way to do it where you know you're getting the right information, the right understanding, mm -hmm. the right revelation with the full impartation. Mm -hmm. You've That's got right. to do this. That's right. And I think about so many times you mentioned about, you know, getting, you know, stretched. I just call it being stretched. You know, you have to know when to run. You got to know when you're just being stretched. I know for me in my own life, you know, I have ran several times. When I say run, you know, I feel like, well, they just ain't right. It just ain't good here. And some, most sometimes it was for me to run. It was, it was showing me, okay, you need to switch. You need to make some adjustments. But there have been times in my life that, you know, I have been stretched. When I say stretched, meaning the word of God has challenged me. It has challenged me to change. And that's not for you to run. That's not what we're talking about here. That's the difference between knowing what's real and knowing what's being deceptive. And that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. The Holy Spirit will let you know. Okay, when it's time to get your stuff and go, or when it's time to know you need to listen, it's time, and you have to allow yourself to say, Okay, God, this is an area I need to grow in, this is an area I need to mature in, this is an area I know I cannot run. Because if we're not careful, we'll be running when God wants to just stretch us, mm -hmm. He wants to get us to the point where we're growing the right way, maturing the right way. But if we run from every little thing because we think it's oh, it's the devil, they're trying to destroy my life, they're trying to destroy my anointing, you're going to run along time. I remember when I was growing up in Christ, it was several of us, several of us that were being called into the ministry. And we had one young minister. His initial sermon was, you can't run forever, but you can run too long. So what I'm trying to say to you is make sure you're not running too long. Every time something comes up against what you feel, your emotions, you run because you don't want to grow. Every time somebody says something that you might not like, even though it goes with the word of God, you run, you find a way of escape. We can't mature like that. 
you have to make the proper adjustment. So this is not what we're talking about. We know that God will show us. He will not uh, allow us to be entrapped. But you can't get to the point where everything you see, oh, it's an entrapment. And it's, it's, it's the devil. Recognize those things where God is trying to get you to grow. He's trying to get you to mature in him. Because if not, you will continue to run and run and run. And, and one thing that I appreciate uh, more and more every day that I live, mm -hmm. and that is truth. Right. I, I, I mean, to me, the ultimate uh, prover, mm -hmm. the ultimate justifier. Right with whoever or whatever is truth and you take the truth mm -hmm. and you add time to it. Right. And you've got a perfect a perfect equation mm -hmm. for knowing who is right and who is wrong. Wow. Why? Because if you take the truth and you 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 have the truth coming from someone mm -hmm. and that truth continues to come from that someone. And it lasts through the test of time. Mm -hmm. Meaning no matter what they go through, no matter what happens in their life, mm -hmm. they still come with truth. Mm -hmm. They still build and dig and, and bring forth the truth. Mm -hmm. And uh, you just wait. And, and it will prove itself out. That's right. But while you're waiting, you've got to be growing yourself. Or you won't even recognize the truth of God if it walks up and knocks you down. That's See, that's what's going on in the body of Christ today. There's too much religion. There's too much uh, uh, outward activity. Mm -hmm. There's too much bodily exercise without any spiritual mm -hmm. content, without any spiritual foundation. Mm -hmm. And many, if they see something uh, or, or recognize something that has the potential to set others uh, in a place, in a pathway that will make them free, mm -hmm. most of the time they will fight against it. Mm -hmm. Most of the times, if it doesn't line up with their foundation, then they will not accept it. And that wouldn't be so bad. But also, they try and rip it apart or tear it down. Mm -hmm. You've got to understand, darling, the truth is the truth. Amen. And I would rather spend five minutes uh, listening to somebody who's going to tell me the truth mm -hmm. than to spend 10 hours listening to somebody sugarcoating it and making me feel like everything's all right and I don't have to change. Listen, mm -hmm. there's one thing I need to tell you straight up. Mm -hmm. I need to make straight. S-K-R-A-T-E. I need to make it straight. Yes, Listen sir. to me. If you're going to live for the Lord, you are going to change. Amen. And you are going to experience change. And you are going to have to grow. And the only way for you to grow is for you to receive the engrafted word of God. Mm -hmm. Desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The more you know, the more you grow. Amen. And a lot of folks are not growing because they're not knowing. Mm -hmm. When you look at this, especially that sixth verse, mm -hmm. says, I saw the woman drunken with the blood of saints mm -hmm. and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered mm -hmm. with great admiration. Right. And, and you, you know, this is John talking here. He said, I was amazed to see that throughout all these years, mm -hmm. Throughout all that's going on, this woman will still perpetrate the lie. Right. Listen to me. A liar is going to lie until the heart is changed. Mm -hmm. And they will not stop it. They will, they will tell so many lies mm -hmm. that they'll begin to believe that it's the truth themselves. Mm -hmm. And that is sad. But it's there. It exists. It operates in the here and now. Mm -hmm. What we have to do is we have to have a, uh, a pendulum of truth. Mm -hmm. We have to have a standard of truth. We have to have a way of being able to discern mm -hmm. what is right and what is wrong. Amen. The word of God is it. Amen. It was one, I know we got to get ready to go, but it was one word that keeps sticking out. And it says the woman was drunken with the blood of saints. And when I think about drunk, I think about being in excess of wine or whatever you have drank. It was excessive. And that's how it was here. It was the, what she had did to the saints, the blood, of, it was excessive. So we got to remember Things are not going to calm down. The enemy is going to get excessive with all he does. We have to just know that whom our Redeemer is. We've already seen the ending. We already know his end. So regardless of how excessive it gets, regardless of how overwhelming it seems, we know the end of the story. Our job is to stay focused and know and whom our Redeemer is, and that's Christ. So sometimes if it'll feel like, you know, I'm not winning because everything around me is excessive. It's, oh, it's just extra. 
But remember, that's all deception. The one truth of the matter is we still win because we're in Christ. So here, like here, it says the woman was drunk with the blood of the saints. There will be people that die. There's going to be martyrs. Just like here, Jesus was one of the martyrs that it was talking about that you know, in this particular vision. But remember, we are saved by grace and we are in him. So we don't have to be concerned with this so much. But remember, regardless of how excessive it gets, we are still safe under the shelter of the Almighty God. And, and you know, it said drunk mm -hmm. with the blood of the saints. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, whenever you're drinking alcoholic beverages or whatever, mm -hmm. you're drinking to get high. <laughs> That's you're true. really drinking to get drunk, so mm -hmm. you you enjoy Which the drinking, and you're looking every the the more you drink, mm -hmm. the better you get as far as uh, better uh, fulfillment you get from what you're drinking, mm -hmm. and and you're trying to get drunk. You mm -hmm. you're not trying to just walk around with a level head. You're trying to get drunk. This lets us know that this religious uh, uh, imitation of mm -hmm. of godliness that Satan has been perpetrating for years, he enjoys it. That's right. He is having the time of his life. Mm -hmm. Hypocrites uh, are, are not your number one enemy, as some of you might think, but it's those ones who are actually operating false religion and false doctrine and false teaching. They are your greatest enemies. And guess what? They enjoy challenging you. They enjoy trying to tear you apart. They enjoy trying to uh, to uh, perpetrate God. Mm -hmm. They enjoy having a form of godliness. That's they don't right. want to live right. They don't want to do right. They just want to look right. And you see, that is not the way you serve God. Whether I look right or not, whether you think I'm right or not, whether I am operating the way you think I should operate or not is not the number one priority. Mm -hmm. The number one priority is am I lining up with God's word, with the principles of God's word? Am I lining up with the truth of God's word? And if that's going on, mm -hmm. uh, then that's your gauge to determine who who that who I am or who that person is. That's right. And be sober. You know, we're talking about, you know, how the enemy is drinking with the saints' blood. Our job is to be sober. And I wanted to read this particular scripture because it always blessed me in my time of travail. But it's in First Peter 5, mm -hmm. 7 through 10. It says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, and I love that but because it's, it's a part after it applies to me, but the God of all grace, who hath called us into the eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. So we may suffer for a little while, but that part, it tells me after I have suffered for a while, my God is going to make me perfect. My God is going to establish me. My God is going to strengthen me, and my God is going to settle me. So the same applies to you. Who could not love a God like that? Amen. Listen to me, darlings. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen. And with God, all things are possible to them that believe. God bless you. We love you. We're looking forward to getting with you again. Continue to, to, to allow Christ to be Christ in your life. Amen. God bless you. Love you. Looking forward again, as I said, to seeing you in our next session.